Welcome back, Akron fans, to the Losers Round 1 of the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. Last matches we saw were Electro vs. Shardan, where it was a 2-1, the first non-shutout in the last half-dozen games, that we've, or last half-dozen series that have been casted. And the next is going to be my previous, my past self versus Haiku. First match is going to be on Kratoria, and as usual, I will refer to myself in the third person when I'm talking about myself playing the game. So Shadow Fury 3 is me a month ago playing this match. Whereas I am me right now talking to you about Shadow Fury 3 in the past, a month ago, having played this match. As well as Haiku. He also played. Let us begin! Shadow Fury starting out in the north southwest corner of the map, going for CISO, switching away from Vekir because he was really annoyed about the fact that micromanagement in Akron is a little bit tricky and once and not the best at dealing with Chrono Energy. CISO, on the other hand, builds a lot more units and can work that way. He is also going up north to try to do what Haiku did last time Haiku played on this map. And Haiku, is he going to do the same thing he did, which is go over to the teleporter and basically build up a proxy base by the teleporters, using that to attack in? And yes, this was played about a month ago. This is actually one of the first matches played of the Losers Round 1. Or actually, I think the third match played of Losers Round 1. I can double-check the dates, if you'd like. I think... Oh, actually, maybe I can't. Not sure, I think the dates are based on the upload date. And it was this was uploaded very recently. For some reason, it wasn't uploaded in a timely fashion. But yeah, this is basically played about a month ago. This tournament has lasted a while. We were waiting a little bit. No, never mind, the date is correct. It was done exactly one month ago on December 23rd at 3.42 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this game was played. 3.42 p.m. and 12 seconds was when I guess this game finished, or possibly started, not sure which. That's what the timestamp says. Anyway, Shadow Fury continuing to the north, getting a found factory just in case, actually copying pretty much exactly what Haiku did in the match against... I don't know who it was even now at this point. I think it was the match against Vermind, actually. It's where Haiku did this. I think it was game three in Haiku versus Vermind. And... Haiku, on the other hand, what is he up to? He is about two minutes down. He is actually... Well, he's going to the center. He's going... Or not the center. He's going to the next, the natural expansion. Building from there. And... An armory at the center of the natural expansion. Not a factory as Shadow Fury is doing. And Haiku continuing on to the south. So yes, both Shadow Fury and Haiku are going for pretty much the exact same strategy. However, Haiku knows how to do this a lot better than Shadow Fury does. So I don't expect Shadow Fury to be doing particularly well. Because Shadow Fury kind of sucks at this game. I just made myself feel terrible. But yeah, anyway, so... Shadow Fury building up to the north, getting up, likely to be a proxy base, and Haiku on the other hand moving to the south, and getting himself set up as well near the teleporters. Not necessarily a proxy base, though. It doesn't look like Haiku is too committed to that. He's moving straight in. Nope. Okay. He's moving to the periphery of the teleporters. He was moving straight into the teleporters, which made me think he was going to just go for a straight teleport rather than going for a proxy base near them. And Shadow Fury is also moving. He has already built a proxy base. The 352 mark. A couple armies. A couple importers. Shadow Fury is starting to pump out infantry. And Haiku actually has to deal with it. Shadow Fury sending in a Lancer as well to his main base just to try to throw him off. Just to try to make Haiku think that Shadow Fury is not going for the same thing Haiku is going for. But on the other hand, Haiku is going for that exact thing, which is the proxy... Fa well, she is proxy importer a bit out of the way of the teleporter periphery, as well as building his own proxy base. But the Lancer... The Lancer is not setting itself up to deal with that. Now, Shadow Fury, on the other hand, looks like it has been given away. Haiku seems to be aware of the base to the northwest. He is sending... A marine there. He's apparently fully aware of this. Or at least he's very likely to be fully aware of this. And the factory is not really doing much apparently after this Lancer. So Shadow Fury only going for the Lancer for a bit of harassment. Haiku on the other hand is committed fully to what he is doing before. Has an armory further back as well so he's not going to be doing any distraction. Shadow Fury basically fully aware that or likely to think that Haiku is doing this. And Haiku is fully aware that Shadow Fury is doing this. Yeah, neutral teleporters really change the game a lot. They they rather make certain strategies involving 
controlling the teleporter is extremely powerful. But that is different, that's for sure. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Admittedly, within the map on its own, it's not, since that's all CISO is going to be doing. But in terms of the game as a whole, it actually is kind of interesting because it means that the different maps play very differently, though admittedly that is because of neutral units on the map rather than because of, say, the terrain. But still, it's different. It's something. Yeah, 325 mark looks like both players are building their proxies at about the same time, though it looks like Shadowfree actually a little bit ahead, and Shadowfree now is fully aware of what Haiku is up to. He does see the importer. He, I don't think he sees... No, he does not see what's going on besides that. He will now, though. Definitely at the four-minute mark, he does see exactly what's going on. He sees what's happening. He is going to lose his Lancer, however, if he tries to fight, and he is not wisely avoiding the fight. And instead... Or no, he's not avoiding the fight at all, or at least that Lancer is doing weird things. But... Haiku, on the other hand, is setting up a proxy at the Northwest Teleporter as well. Just to make sure that he can actually control that too. So Haiku really has much more map control than Shadow Fury does. Shadow Fury has that harassing Lancer, but it's not going to do too much. It might help a little bit. It is aware of where Haiku is set up, but only partially. Haiku has actually spread himself up quite a bit, while Shadow Fury is focused very much on the Teleporters. And Haiku... Hard to really say what it really has. There's no single point of failure. That's the thing. I mean, Haiku could lose an importer here or there, but it wouldn't kill him outright. While Shadow Fury, on the other hand, if this base gets assaulted directly, he's kind of done for. He doesn't have any Marines anywhere else on the map. He doesn't have any RPs anywhere else on the map. But more importantly, doesn't have any importers anywhere else on the map except for his main base. And admittedly, the Lancer is trying to harass this main base, trying to slow Haiku down, but Haiku is so much in the bank. And he already has two extra RPs. Actually, Haiku has an economic advantage at this point. Shadow Fury does only has one extra RP. Has a mech as well, possibly trying to build a macrofab. But Shadow Fury is basically focused on pumping out infantry, getting as many extra armories as he can, and should point out not queuing units. I've pointed this out before about how players should not queue units when playing a CISO. So, yeah. Just to point out that I'm not always a hypocrite, although I don't know if I've ever been a hypocrite before, but I don't want to act like I've never been a hypocrite, because I probably have been a hypocrite at some point. But in this particular case, at that specific time, I am following my own advice. I am not queuing. At least, not right now. Maybe I queue later in the game, I'm not sure. I might. If I do, I'll call myself out on it. This means I'm a lying hypocrite, with absolutely no dignity whatever, whatsoever. But as far as I can tell, that has not happened. However, as far as I can also tell, Shadow Fury is not actually really dealing any damage to Haiku. Haiku's doing just fine, building more RPs, building more armories, building more importers. And Shadow Fury, on the other hand, is stagnating for economy, building up a bunch of infantry, but not actually teleporting them anywhere. He has eight infantry right now. He can actually deal with any individual area on the map. If he teleports over here, he can deal with it. Teleports to the main base, he doesn't even need to. The Lancer's actually taking care of it for the most part. If he teleports over to the other teleporters, he actually can't do that because they are too far away. But looks like Shadow Fury is not aware that he could actually deal with this over here. This base here in the south or the northeast. And Haiku has counterattacked, getting rid of Shadow Fury's entire econ economic infrastructure in the back. And Shadow Fury trying to rebuild, but spotted by the Marine on guard by Haiku and the proxy armory. So no extra resource processors for Shadow Fury. He did not actually take this area when he had the chance, while Haiku, on the other hand, did. Very wise of him to do that. And of course, Haiku also built up a second base in the back. So Shadow Fury, way too committed to the rush, that did not pan out, or has not panned out so far. And... Looks like he is actually now going for the teleport. Going for it, not a whole lot of Q Plasma, sorry, not a lot of Chrono Energy left. No Q Plasma is required here. Chrono Energy, not Q Plasma, completely different thing. Trying to set everything up for the teleport, getting everything into the teleport radius, and where will he teleport to? That is that remains to be seen. He's teleporting over to what the There we go. Teleporting over to the least important part of the map. Over to the southeast. Possibly try to get rid of the base that Haiku has inevitably set up. Probably what he's trying to do. But at this point it almost doesn't matter because Haiku's already set himself up in a good position and Shadow Fury now moving to defend Well, way too late. And even more coming into the north. Haiku is setting... I should zoom in a bit more, because the imagery are going to be hard to see. It occurs to me that the imagery are actually kind of hard to see. I apologize that I wasn't zooming in further. But... Lancer is dealing... It's still dealing with this stuff. My goodness. Lancer is taking a long time. 
Seven minutes in the game, the Lancer has only t gotten rid of two RPs and an importer. And now the main base being, or the, well, the main, not even the main anything. Haiku had attacked, but he left a couple forces on guard. His main army is actually going up to the northwest, where Shadow Fury has set up his main base, but the thing is, Shadow Fury is not really set up to defend that, so that's about to go down. More units are being built up. But only so much can be built so quickly. Shadow Fury has only, it doesn't have any LC. He has importers, but no liquid crystal, and that is basically going to do it for him. He's going to lose that base. Try to attack with what he can, attacking towards the middle northeast. But even then, it's just not enough. It's really not going to be enough. I don't see how Shadow Fury is going to be able to get through this and actually win the game. I mean, he has enough Marines. The thing is, of course, he has Marines, but he has no resources with which to build RPs. So yeah, Shadow Fury is basically entirely depending on getting rid of Haiku's infrastructure before Haiku can build any more. And Haiku is so spread out at this point. I mean, Haiku, check from his point of view, he has two armories in one section of the map, another armory by the teleporters, another two armories by the southeast teleporters. Sorry, I should say by the northwest teleporters in the first case. I mean, Haiku is set up. And Haiku's also barely queuing units. Queuing two units isn't too big of a deal. Like sometimes you will queue two units, especially later in the game when you have a lot of money, it doesn't much matter, matter either way. Like, having one unit built and one unit queued behind it isn't a big deal. Having five units queued is a big deal. And more units coming in. Haiku continuing to build up, continuing to get himself set up across the map, primarily in this base here, but nothing to really worry about. Shadow Fury is trying to send himself up to attack, getting himself... Getting an attack going from the south side of the base in the northwest, or sorry, northeast. The base of the northwest has been destroyed, by the way. Shadow Fury only has this set of infantry. This is all he has. This is it. These last remaining nine units are it. Last remaining eight units are it. Seven units are it. Okay, seven units. Last remaining seven units are it, but I think that Haiku's probably going to change this around. I mean, he's... Jumping back from his point of view, yeah, he's building more units. He's he's going to make sure that it's there's no last remaining units. He's also built up an armory just in a nice place. Those Marines can actually shoot over the armory because Marines have lob fire. Whereas Shadow Fury's forces, that's half Marines, half special ops, and he can't actually shoot at what he can't see. In other words, Shadow Fury's done. This game is over. Shadow Fury has lost this game. Can't really do much to this, and... Shadow Fury's going to see what he can do, try to do what he can, try to get himself in a position where he can see past the armory, but it really doesn't matter. And even though Shadow Fury is still able to deal a fair amount of damage, but not enough, losing losing two of his units basically for free, able to kill that last Marine, but Haiku's probably going to go back and change stuff a bit, and even then it doesn't matter. Haiku doesn't need to change anything up, just teleporting in Marines from the northwest side of the map over to this and finishing it off, Haiku wins Shadow Fury GG's. That is game one. We are going into game two, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to the Losers Round 1 of the Akron Christmas 2013 tournament. Even though I realize it is late January 2014, this tournament's taking a while. But... We are at the Losers Round 1. By the way, the tournament has been played past this point. I just am casting one round at a time. Losers Round 1, last match, last series, Game 2 of Haiku vs. Shadow Fury. Last game was on Kratoria, Ciso vs. Ciso, and that was just an infantry madness game. Infantry and teleportation everywhere, as Kratoria often is for Ciso. Game 2, however, is on Tomb of Heroes, which does not have neutral teleporters. It has neutral comm hubs, but it hasn't had neutral teleporters for a very long time. Shadow Fury also going CISO, and Haiku probably will once again be CISO, so we'll have a CISO mirror. Interesting that there's been no Grekum today. None at all. This is new. Th really, Grekum is very popular. Although admittedly in this tournament, the players had a pretty even spread of species. Granted, we are entering the point where players are being knocked out of the tournament permanently, so the spread of species may not be so even after this point. I mean, for certain... There is going to be one fewer CISO in the tournament after this match. Like Once either this game or the next game, depending on who wins this game, is over, there's going to be one fewer CISO no matter who wins. Anyway, Shadow Fury setting up economy pretty quickly. Haiku, on the other hand, not setting up an economy quickly. Not at the 
not his base anyway, going past the center, possibly building some economy in the center of the map. That is not uncommon. Getting his infantry over through the center, and that'll, well, that'll be done when it's done. And it looks like Shadow Fury, on the other hand, what is he up to? Shadow Fury is going to just continue building his economy up. Getting his RPs up. Probably get to six RPs and then build an armory. While Haiku, on the other hand, might be scattered. He's getting scattered up in the Marine. And a importer being built in the center of the map. Looks like Marine going north to build a resource processor as well. And that is exactly what it's doing. Haiku is focusing on the center of the map, trying to take that very early. Well, Shadow Fury, on the other hand, looks like he's focused primarily on his main base. He does have some scouts going, his special ops and his Marine, so he is able to see that Haiku is going to the center of the map. But possibly not able to tell that Haiku is trying to just completely take over the center of the map, which is exactly what he's doing, and doing well. He has managed to do that. So, Shadow Fury, at the 138 mark, about to get another RP, although admittedly, he's not fast-forwarding, surprisingly enough. Why is Shadow Fury not fast-forwarding? He should be fast-forwarding. He was fast-forwarding to do everything, because Shadow Fury always does that. This is unusual. Haiku, on the other hand, is fast-forwarding. He jumped back to race switch to Grekum. Okay. I guess, sure, why not? That's a little bit of an odd thing to do. I'm not sure if this is a double feint. I think this is... I don't actually recall. I don't think this is a double feint. I think Haiku actually genuinely just switched to Grekum just to completely throw off Shadow Fury in this game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is genuine. I'm pretty sure he's going straight for a Grekum feint. Or a Grekum, well, CISO opening, and then Species Switch to Grekum. I'm quite surprised. Haiku is a CISO player, but then again, he might just feel like he can just win with whatever species he plays. So it really doesn't matter. Haiku, back at his point in time, yeah, he's playing Grekum. He's definitely playing Grekum. Now, Shadow Fury, on the other hand, is... Getting up some infantry, he is... Still not making the most of the fast forward command. Well, he is attacking. He hasn't seen that species switch yet. And Haiku attacking pretty hard. I wouldn't be surprised if Haiku does go for it. No, he's not going for a double feint. He is not going for that double feint at all. He is, however, going to the center of the map once again. His overall strategy is unchanged. His species with which to actually execute the strategy, however, has changed. Getting Octo is probably for a quick Octo rush. Which Shadow Fury is not expecting at all at this point. Shadow Fury entirely expects that he is fighting against CISO, and that he has at least gotten rid of one of Haiku's importers. And Haiku, on the other hand, Shadow Fury does see the proxy coming in, or not the proxy, he does see the infantry coming in to attack him. Attacking the factory and the importer as well. Actually, point out the importer is nicely set up for fighting against Grekum, but that factory is not. So we'll see if that changes once Grekum species switch is revealed, and Haiku. Haiku does now see the... Sorry, Shadow Fury does see the PC Switch. Haiku's PC Switch has been revealed for what it is. And Shadow Fury now has to deal with that. While Haiku, of course, doesn't have to worry too much about this at all, Haiku simply has to worry about, well, basically, what Shadow Fury sees, and honestly, Shadow Fury doesn't see anything. He doesn't see that Haiku is over the center of the map, that he's building RPs there, that he's really only got one Octo. I think he might... Shadow Fury might have seen that there wasn't anything in the main base, but... On the other hand, Shadow Fury, knowing he's now fighting against Grekum, needs to worry about possibly building himself up to have a nice little SimCity. And getting special ops, which for a SimCity does not work well. I'm going to be honest, something I forgot when playing this game was that SimCity only works with lob fire units. The buildings are actually considered obstacles when you consider the height of the units. The buildings are considered obstacles that you cannot actually shoot through. Special ops cannot shoot through buildings. They can only shoot well they can shoot around things obviously but they can't shoot through things marines on the other hand can effectively shoot through things because they shoot over things and shooting over things is about the same thing so right now shadow fury is set up okay if these attack from here the special ops will be able to deal with anything over here but the marine can't actually deal with everything and unfortunately more special ops are coming for i mean not a bad reason special ops are tougher units they can heal and at this point the special ops has no chance this nice little bunkered area is now entirely marine-only territory. I think Shadow Fury probably didn't figure at the time that the importers... Because the importers, as you can see, are not very high. They aren't very tall buildings, so it looks like the Special Ops can actually go past them. But the truth is, no. No, they cannot. The, sh the Special Ops simply cannot fire through importers. Or if they can, it's within corners and such, like right here. 
right here they'd be able to fire through it. Now, Haiku, on the other hand, he's actually, looks like he switched up a bit. He's not quite set up so much for the center. He is still pushing towards the center, and it looks like, at Shadow Fury's point of view, two minutes up from there, there's a strong auction attack coming in. Lancers are coming into support as well, which isn't bad, but this SimCity, unfortunately, is not helping out that much, because... The Grecom units coming in are too far away to actually get hit by it. The Lancer are going down at the same time to the Seppi. But there's not really much that can be done with the SimCity. The SimCity is not near the units. So that's that was a bit of a waste, unfortunately. I'm afraid of that. Now, Haiku, on the other hand, still getting up the economy in the center of the map. Still pretty healthy going. I mean, admittedly, a bit of a rush strategy, but... No, he's going for healthy economy. Haiku basically has this game in the bag from the looks of it, and Shadow Fury might have a chance. Shadow Fury actually could. In fact, come to think of it, Shadow Fury is starting to get some extra forces. He is getting more forces being built up, and Haiku does not. Shadow Fury might actually have a chance of taking advantage of Haiku's proxy economy. We'll see, though. It's still a little bit tough, and at this point, Haiku has set himself up so he can actually see what's going on in pretty much all in enough of the southern expansions as to matter. However, Shadow Fury is expanding to the south as well. He is take, trying to do what he can there. Getting actually pretty good expansion going. Three LCRPs, one QPRP. Machinery has not been researched yet, and Shadow Fury is focusing heavily on economy. He's assuming Haiku is going for the late game, which doesn't appear to be a totally unsafe assumption. Though Haiku is starting to build more and more octopods, and there are no tornads to deal with this, nor are there tanks or anything really hefty to actually get rid of... Although Machinery is being researched, Shadow Fury could start getting those pretty quickly. But they don't exist right now, that's the one thing. And Haiku, on the other hand, he does have Octopods right now, they are coming in, they are going to be dealing a lot of damage, and once that damage is dealt, it can't really easily be undealt. Because Haiku probably is going to attack near the unplayable past edge, and at that point, kind of hooped. Shadow Fury does not have Chronoporting, or the ability to Chronoport. However, Lance is trying to come in, doing what it can. It's actually not doing too badly. It's getting some harassment in, but Haiku, on the other hand, is two minutes down from that particular harassment and could easily just stand up the Seppi in order to get rid of it. And Haiku, jumping to the 720 mark, is not attacking near the Implevo Pass, so the damage could be undone. However, Shadow Fury really doesn't have a whole lot to work with. He is starting to get Tornads, or starting to get tanks, I should say. Getting some ATCs, getting a Tornad and a tank. So he is setting himself up for more production and... Possibly going to get a Macrofab sometime soon. I think he had a, I think I saw a mech. No, never mind. The mech had already died. I expect Shadow Fury will start building an extra factory at some point. Just to use up the LC that's coming in. Because Shadow Fury has a pretty healthy economy. As it is, three... Well, nine LCRPs and four QPRPs is not bad. But now come the Octopods. The Moment of Truth is here. And actually, Haiku... Make sure the Moment of Truth... No, that's the Lancer assaulting. So Haiku... Actually, is making sure the Moment of Truth comes sooner. An Octo is coming in from the south, and it looks like it's not going to be attacking right away. Let's going to try to sync up with the Octopods coming in. And unfortunately, the Tornad Factory is too far up in front. It is going to get probably torn down before it's able to complete its construction. While Haiku, on the other hand, getting... Well, getting an RP right here. I think Haiku's going to probably change this around to just attack the RPs directly. But he does have an RP in the middle of Shadow Fury's base, and it looks like... We'll see if he's moving this Octo around. I think that's what the pause is for. Yep, that's exactly what the pause is for. The Octo is moving in to attack the Marine, get rid of it, and then get rid of all the resource processors, weakening Shadow Fury's economy, which I guess means that's a good thing that Shadow Fury didn't build up the additional factories. He wouldn't have been able to afford them. And... At this point, Shadow Fury is trying to harass, but... To no avail, at the same time, the Octopods are coming in the 750 mark at the Unplayable Past Edge. Actually, jump back to the 711 mark at the Unplayable Past Edge. Looks like Haiku is in a really good spot right now. Machinery has just been completed for Shadow Fury, or just about to be completed. And the tank's still not up, the Tornad's still not up. The Tornad's being much more useful in this case. And Shadow Fury is... He is queuing, although, okay, for the reason that the factory is going to go down. But yeah, Shadow Fury is queuing. Shadow Fury is a total hypocrite. Although, maybe not. Never mind. He actually isn't queuing. That queue was undone. Shadow Fury got around that. He, he undid that queue. Why are all these things queued? That's like a mistake. Especially since they are kind of vanishing from the queue as things go on. But from Shadow Fury's point of view, he is building... Well, okay. That queue is slightly understandable because the factory has gone down. But yeah. Shadow Fury, you're a total hypocrite. 
How dare you make me look like a hypocrite a month in the future by not operating exactly off the advice that I give at all times. You're a terrible person. I just don't know what I do with my past self sometimes. Anyway, it doesn't really matter though, because Shadowfree is not looking keen to win the game. Queuing or no, although admittedly having had a second factory would have been helpful in this case. Regardless of the economic damage to the south, a second factory would have been useful. It would have given him a bit more power, it would have given these units sooner. This is why I say queuing is a bad idea. Build an extra production structure if you have to queue, because this is exactly why. You end up not being able to build the units you need when you need them, because they come out slower. Because I mean, Shadowfury isn't really queuing too much, but he is running out of resources. While Haiku, of course, doesn't even have to worry about queuing, he can queue all he pleases because Grekum construction is in parallel. And it looks like Haiku is possibly saving it for chronoporting. Yeah, that appears to be exactly what he's doing. Saving it for chronoporting confident, he can just deal with this base as it is now without having to worry about counterattack. And he certainly can, because Shadowfury has thrown in the towel. That is game, that is match, that is losers round one. The entirety of losers round one has been played out. So, losers round two is Vermine versus J Raccoon, while. Second game there is Sheridan versus Haiku. But next cast will be God versus Monkuki and Cybernetic Pony versus Kitan, the round three casts. I will have those probably next week sometime. Hopefully next Tuesday. For now, however, thank you all for watching and have a good night.